Hello, this is Damian Kirk, back with my sixth video in the series of videos on my Minecraft processor. This right here is going to be the subject of this video. This is the ALU, everything from here on, this whole big unit that I haven't covered yet. Uh, it's pretty big, and you notice there's a lot of open space right in the middle here. Maybe There might have been ways to uh, compress this a little bit, but overall it really did need to be about this size. But uh, we'll just look around a little bit and see... See how everything works. It, it doesn't slow it down too much to have it sticking out a little more. Um, so first, let's look at how it takes input. I explained before that the registers here are, or the read register values are meshed together. So these values on the bottom, uh, coming out of every other one, this is from read register one. And if you track these on the ground, uh, it's kind of hard to see past all these other lines. But basically, each one of those goes into the ALU. Uh, this is from one of the, the read register one lines. This is another one. It's going into the, the left side there. Um, and I'll explain how each of these works after I go over a few more things about the input. So these other lines that are coming out a little bit higher from the read register ports, yeah, are coming from read register two. And instead of going straight into the ALU, these go into these little things. And these are just, uh, this is just a little multiplexer that is selecting between this line from read register 2 and this line, which is coming from bit 0 of the instruction, which is from the immediate value. If so, this is an, if this is an imme add immediate, which in this case it is, uh, then it'll be selecting these lines coming in from the instruction. And uh, in this case it is. Th this is being selected by the ALU source control signal that I talked about in my video on the control unit. Down there, uh, you'll see soon, we have four control signals coming into the ALU. One of them is the ALU source signal, which is coming in here and selecting one of these two values. So right now it's on because this is an add immediate instruction because that's just what I have loaded right now. But uh, if this was off, then we would be getting the values from read register two coming into the ALU. So this uh, multiplexer outputs here and then it feeds into this XOR gate, which is XORed with another one of the control signals coming in, which is B negate, which uh, flips all the bits and carries into the least significant adder. Um, and is used for subtraction, including set less than, things like that. So uh, let's just go down here real quick and take a look at the control signals coming in. Uh, right down here, these are the control signals. Um, this one right here is, yeah, I believe this is B negate because it's feeding into the other side of all these XOR gates. So if this is on, we're, then we're negating, which means we need to XOR all these uh, incoming bits, uh, the second inputs, with that signal, which will just reverse them if it's on. A little earlier on here, we have the actual ALU source signal. Again, this is on, and it's selecting the immediate values. Uh, oh, oh, right here you can see that this is one of the immediate values and it's being sent to two different places because there are only seven bits of immediate value, but the ALU and the registers use eight, so it gets sign extended and this bit just goes to two different places, the most and second most significant bits. Again, this is B negate and you see right here it splits off a little bit sooner than uh, it splits off over there to go to the XOR gates. This is part of the carry look ahead adder that I'll be covering in a few minutes because that's a whole, a whole other topic that is going to require a lot of time. And then these two control signals on the left here are the ALU mode selectors, basically. So these are going to be choosing between and or the adders and uh, less, the less output, which is for set less than. Um, so let's take a look at each of the actual ALUs. Let's go to the least significant one down on the end, just as an example. So these are the two control lines that are still coming through, and they're at each one of these, they're going to have these little spiraling patterns going down the sides. And then they're going to be input into AND gates with different sets of negations depending on uh, what they're selecting. So down here, this is going to be allowed to be on if this one is off and this one is on. Oh, in this case, this is that's what this is. So this is selecting the adder. This is the the actual full adder of the ALU. 
this is going to be selecting this output. So if this it was outputting a 1, then this AND gate would also be outputting a 1 uh, into this. This thing on the front is kind of the, the OR gate of the whole thing. Um, here we have, I believe this is OR. Yeah, both the lines are coming in right there, and that's ORing them together. And if the control lines are, I think that one is off and this one is on, then that will allow this through. Uh, this one is for AND, uh, which is if both of these are off. Yeah, if they're both zero, then that's selecting AND. And then only on this least significant one, we also have this, which is if they're both on, and this signal is on, then this out will output a one. And this is the less output that's used for set less than. So this signal that is that is being allowed through in that case is coming from the adder of the most significant bit. So if that adder is outputting 1, that means that the result of the sub subtraction is negative, which means that the first number is less than the second number, which means that the output needs to be a 1, of course. So uh, You notice that the rest of the 1-bit adders here don't have that, because they don't really need anything like that. Uh, and if the ALU control, ALU mode lines are selecting that output, then that won't be right for any of these other ones, so they'll just output zero, which is what you want. Um, and you can see if we come around the back how these inputs come in. So after we've determined what the actual values are going to be, they go up these ladders. Once again, I use the redstone uh, half slab ladder structure, and they go to the full adder here. They go to an or, they go to an and, this is an and, and uh, and that is the those are the operations that they need to be involved with. All right. Hopefully, I didn't miss anything there, because I'm now going to move on to talking about the carry look ahead part of this uh, this thing. Look at the and and or signals here, they're going into their respective and gates to uh, for the multiplexer here for each bit, but they're also being sent off to the side. And this is for the carry look ahead for the adders. So you notice the, the the AND and OR outputs are also being used as generate and propagate for each bit. So you can see this here, the AND signal is also sent directly into the carry in for the next bit because if generate is on for this, then it needs to carry into the next one. And it's also being sent off to serve as the generate signal for this bit for future uh, you know, conditions for carry-in. Similarly, you have the OR signal here, which is being sent out to be used as the propagate sig signal. So right here, well, first of all, let's look at uh, the carry-in for this is coming from the same source as the right side of all these XOR gates, which is B negate. So if B negate is on, then there's a carry-in automatically, and that just makes subtraction work by flipping all the bits and adding one. It's also being sent kind of in the opposite direction from the rest of these along this line. This is basically saying if there's a carry in for the least significant bit and this signal is on, and I believe this signal is propagate from this bit, then this line will be off and that line will be on, and that will carry into this bit as well. So the that will create a carry in and generate over here will also directly carry in. If we look at the next one, you notice we have that same, these same conditions continue on. So this line is the same over here, uh, and then this line that's powering this torch is also coming over here to be used here. So this is still propagate for the least significant, least significant bit. So if those two conditions are still met, and we have uh, this one, which is the propagate from the next bit, then that is also sufficient for carry-in. So you see we still have the same condition on this next bit. That is still uh, B negate. This is still propagate for uh, the least significant bit. It's the same signal from over there, just carried through over here. So that's the same condition, but we also have to have this signal, which is propagate for the second to least significant bit. If those conditions are all met, then there's a carry-in for the third to least significant bit. Or if we just have this, which is generate from the 
le least significant bit, just coming from over there, and propagate from the le second to least significant bit, because this is still the same signal from right there, uh, then that will create a carry-in. And again, generate from this bit is also wired into the carry-in there. Uh, and as you go down the line, this gets more and more complex. Uh, there's only one level of, of this. I don't have any super generate or super propagate, but you can see all these lines that are coming in kind of on the diagonal slant here. These are all the generate lines. So these are the propagate lines. And by the end, you have this big complex structure where each of these bars in the front is an AND gate. So this is B negate and all these propagate signals up until then, then that'll create a carry-in for the most significant bit, or generate from the least significant bit and all the other propagates from the subsequent bits, all the possible conditions that could create a carry-in here, all the way up to generate two bits ago and propagate one bit ago, or the generate signal from right here. So that's how the carry look ahead works and I was pretty pleased with how this turned out. I was expecting to have a lot more problems with it but the way I laid this out is uh, kind of like this grid if you look at it from well from the inside uh, facing forward like this that just a it is adding a column of complexity on the right because the conditions for one bit are the same as the conditions for the next bit except on the next bit you have to add the last propagate to all of the possible conditions and then you also have to take into account the generate from, from that bit as its own condition. Um, and I think that really helps to illustrate just how carry look ahead works. So these right here are the output lines, and you can see they're, uh, each one is just coming from result or of each of the multiplexers for all the, um, for all the bits. So those are the least significant ones, and these four are the most significant ones. And they all go around and join back up in the back of the the right data port for the register file. And then right here, this is uh, it, kind of important to talk about. This line is getting power from this, which is the outcome of all the adders, all the, the different adders and the, the thing. So this is the zero signal, like in Appendix C, the ALU that this is kind of modeled after, has a zero signal. So this signal this is on if these two, the two numbers being fed in are equal and the, uh, the thing's in subtraction mode. So if whatever is the result from the adders is zero, then this line will be on. You see that any, any of these will be being on will transmit the signal here and turn this torch off. So right now it's saying these are not equal or maybe they're not even subtracting. But if, the, if we had two registers that have the same value being fed in here and we were subtracting them this line would be on which gets sent over there as a signal to the branching hardware to say this is equal or this is not equal do you want to branch well i really hope i haven't missed anything i think i've pretty much covered everything but um obviously there's always more details that might help you know make things clearer but i think i've pretty much covered how everything works for the most part um, yeah, tune in next time, or, you know, keep watching for the next video, where I explain my output hardware over there, how I print out numbers, and then after that, I think I'm going to do one more video where I just do a, a quick sample program and just show how, how it runs and what's going on when it's running, and that should be the series. Uh, thanks for watching.